Hi everyone, this is our Ask a Guru segment. Guru in Tagalog means teacher, and with us today is our healthcare guru, Dr. Rick Sagil. How's it going, Dr. Rick? Okay, Mark, good to be here. We're glad you're here. So today we're going to talk, Dr. Rick, about something that a lot of people are dealing with, the idea of stress and how to manage stress. So let's start here. What creates stress for a lot of uh, the patients that you see? It's interesting because a lot of people, when I ask them about a relaxation practice, they'll say, well, I'm not stressed out. And, you know, stress could be somebody coming into the studio with a gun. We'd all be high in fight or flight. Scary. No question. Quite scary. But stress is actually waking up 8 o'clock in the morning on Monday, driving to work. In fact, the highest amount of heart attacks in the world are usually about 8 to 9 o'clock in the morning on Monday. Wow. Well, it, 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 it's because the amount of stress that we're in. Not, that's invisible stress, not the gun thing, but uh, stress because you didn't eat properly on time. Stress because you, your, your child is sick and you have to stay home. Stress because you have a deadline and, or it's accounting time. The holidays, those are all stressors and they add to the disease process that comes with unanswered stress. Would you classify stress as a disease state? Huh, that's a good question. No, it's not a disease state, but it leads to many different diseases. Mm. If you look at all the emergency room visits in the U.S. at least, 80% are because of or related to stress. Ulcers, insomnia, really? chest pain, shortness of breath, asthma, irritable bowel syndrome. The majority of them are related, not due to exactly, but related to stress. Would you say that there are certain situations more than others that create stress? It depends on the person. Uh, if I have uh, somebody who meditates, then the likelihood of them tolerating stressors, whether small or big, well, pretty, pretty, pretty good. If I have mm -hmm. somebody that doesn't have any stress-relieving uh, stress activity, then they will probably, in due time, fall from the stressors that are accumulating. Christmas time, holidays, birthdays, uh, end of the year uh, assignments are all stress-related, or they all add to the stress. You're adding fuel to the fire. So a lot of our viewers just heard you say stress-relieving activities. For many of us, that usually signals, well, let me go out for a drink with my friends, right. or let me go on vacation, or let me go watch Netflix. These are obviously not the kind of uh, uh, stress-relieving activities that you're talking about. What are some of the best stress-relieving activities that you can think of uh, that our viewers should know about? Really, I'm, I'm a yoga instructor, <clears throat> and I'm also a meditative coach. I'd always harp on that, but that doesn't always uh, resonate with a lot of people. So it's a matter of trying to find something for the individual. If I have a runner, they know very well that if you're a runner and right. you know when you get into the groove, you hear the pace, whether it's snow or rain, you actually will feel great after the run. Whether or not you accomplished a marathon. People who walk their dogs, that's also relaxing. People who hold hands with their loved ones and just spend 20 seconds. You know, 20 seconds of a hug is said to increase the amount of serotonin, the feel-good hormone, in the body so that it almost equals Prozac or Paxil or Zoloft. Really? Just 20 seconds of that? That's what the studies show. That's where the hard data of research is really helpful for figuring out how can we break that cycle of damage that occurs when we have unanswered stress. I see. So you just mentioned that you're a yoga practitioner. What are the main benefits that you see and that our viewers should know about um, your yoga experiences? Well, the, the root word of yoga means to yoke. It means bringing together body, mind, and spirit. Mm -hmm. As I always talked about before, you have to have some form of nutrition change, you have some form of relaxation practice, some form of activity to be successful in living to 90 with no medicines or surgery. Well, yoga, I believe, has helped me cultivate a way of living that I, I hope will get me to the point where I, I avoid the heart attack and I avoid the cancer. When I have people that are interested in learning about yoga, whether it's going to a one hour class or just practicing shoulder rolls or working on what's called pranayama, breath exercise. Breath exercises. N yeah, yoga is, not, is, is more than just poses. I actually have, uh, in one of the old yoga classes I used to teach, I had a big 230 uh, 30 pound lineman come in, mm -hmm. a football player, 230 pounds, and he was terrible with his poses. But that wasn't the objective. He was stressed out. So I, I took him through the poses as best as possible. He didn't hit them like my 20-year-old 100-pound women, but he was still practicing. He was still going through the motions, and he was working on breath. Something as easy as breath. I actually, he was teary-eyed after the first few classes because he was so calm 
and he've never, he's never felt that before. And I, I said, you know, the heck with the way the poses are, let's just go through the breath exercise. I gave him permission to slow down, which we all don't have. Could you give me a 30 second preview of a breath exercise? Is that something that we could show our viewers uh, right now? Because I yeah. find this very interesting. I love breath exercise. In, in yoga or Ayurveda, it's called pranayama. So everybody has an inhale, everybody has an exhale. But when you break it down into inhale, pause, exhale, slow, inhale, quick, pause, exhale, slow. There's actually a tempo that a teacher of mine taught me. Four seconds in, seven seconds of a pause, eight seconds out. And like any Navy SEAL, I, I've had a couple of them too, they'll usually resonate with that because when you have the exhale longer than the inhale, there's something called the parasympathetic system. Mm -hmm. It turns on the vagus nerve here, it slows down the heart, lowers the blood pressure. That's the science of it. But just doing that, whether it's you're doing it before you go to sleep, doing it before a presentation, doing it before a, before a taping of a Filipino talk show, right, right. it always helps to turn on the parasympathetic, the relaxation response, and you're good to go. The best thing about that exercise is we probably just had a couple of viewers out there who were following us while we were doing it. So when we talk about stress, we're talking about breathing and how, and how that's the best. Yoga seems very intimidating to somebody like me. How hard is it really? Would you be able to show us? I certainly would love to show you what my practice of yoga is. Remember, everybody's practice is different. Just like templating a lifestyle change to be healthy, you don't all, not all my guys, especially my football player, he doesn't exactly practice the way my, my experienced yoga practitioners practice. So it's up to me to teach, but it's up to the individual to develop and cultivate their own practice. In fact, let me show you a couple of my favorite poses and you might get an idea of how it helps. Mm -hmm. 